Hey, welcome to Kate Crafts. I'm Kate. Today I would like to share with you how I created this card using some Lawn Fawn products and Distress Oxides. Let's get started. Off camera, I have gone ahead and used some full stick post-it note paper and stamped out the images that I am going to use for some stamp masking. Yep, we're going to stamp mask because I don't own the Halloween trick-or-treaters from Lawn Fawn, so I figured, well, I might as well just make my own. So I'm kind of getting myself an idea here on what I need to do, and I'm kind of thinking through it as I go. And all I'm doing with these guys is just cutting out their faces, but making sure that the cuts are big enough to be able to house the little boy and girl faces. So I'm taking the germ-free bear and the Yeti from Yeti or Not, and lining them back up on my mask, peeling off the bigger parts of the mask, and I will stamp them out. And once I'm done stamping them out, I will be able to put the masks back on and line them up, and then I'll be able to take off the little faces. So once I've done that, I will check it out and think, hmm, maybe I'll put the faces back on and I might have a better idea of how I want to line these guys up. Now, you don't have to do this step, but I found that it helped in my placement. So once I've got everybody straight, I will stamp those guys out over top of my masks and then I will create some more. So I'm creating the little alien mask here and I'm going to cut out his face. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I didn't quite have the ghost that I wanted. Like I could have used the ghosts from Booyah, but I wanted it to look more like a people ghost rather than a ghost ghost. So I'm just taking the little alien and lining up the face like I did with the first ones and stamping that out. And then once I'm done, I'll be able to peel off all of my masks. And you get the idea here. So I'm going to set that off to the side. And we're going to do a little bit of ink blending. So I have got some mustard seed, some ripe persimmon, some seedless preserve, and some villainous potion. And this is what I'm going to use to create the um, setting sun sky, I guess. Because trick-or-treaters tend to go out just as it's starting to get dark, or at least that's what I did as a kid. I don't know about you. Did you go trick-or-treating when you were young? Do you take kids out trick-or-treating? I know I get maybe 12 kids if I'm lucky because I live in a pocket of the city where not too many people venture, so I mean we get a lot of traffic, but not a lot of foot traffic. And uh, when the kids come knocking on my door, I make sure to load up their bags with candy because, like I said, I might might see 12. Some years I've only saw three and I end up with a whole lot of candy and somebody's got to eat it. So anyway, I'm just going in back and forth until I like the blend. I decided I didn't like the Villainous Potion, so... I end up pulling out some black soot just to kind of mood me up the edges of this panel. Darken them up, make them a little more spooky, and then I'll blend that out with whatever's left on my brush. And then next, we are going to do a little bit of splatter. So I'm using my pearlescent fine text, and we're going to go into the crystal gold. Now, when I did this, I kind of didn't keep it into focus. Like you'll see here, I have this in focus, and I just got to take a second to appreciate this gold. Like, look at how that gold moves around in the water. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Mm, I love it. So I'm going to load that up on my little palette there. That way I can pick some up when I need to. And then I'll set this off to the side. And you can see it didn't come back into focus, so I'll kind of take that out. And I took the grass that I'm going to use, and I mixed in a little bit of black with that gold. Oh, there we go. We're back in focus. So this is the grass panel that I end up using. Next up, we have the coloring. If you want to skip the coloring, that's quite all right. If you want to stick around, cool. You can hear me ramble on endlessly. <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe not. Anyway, I'm going in with my lightest to darkest and trying to keep in tone with the, well not in tone, but in tune I should say, with the color of the background that I had. I didn't want anything too contrasting, 
as far as, or clashing, I should say, as, as far as the colors were concerned. So I thought I'd try to keep this as basic as possible. I'm using the purples and the grays and the blue purples, the blue violets, sorry. And then for the hair, it's going to be a little ginger kid, just because I thought it'd be cute. And the next child up for coloring is this little monster guy. And I'm going in with the G29, the G99, and the G94. Now, the G99 and the 94 are new colors to me, and I kind of like them. They're, they're like this army green color, which I wish I would have had before. And I'm going in with some YG13, and just to kind of give his feet a little bit of shadow, like he's wearing shoes, W9. And for the ghost, I wanted to keep it as light as possible, so I'm going in with the N2 and the N0, and I'll just color this dude in right here. Now, I kind of wish he had little feeties on the bottom, but it is what it is. And for the girl bear here, all I'm doing is drawing a circle with my darkest marker, and that's going to be where her face is kind of popping out. And I am just creating a little bit of shadow with this E39. And then I'll blend it out again with the E37. And then again with the lightest tone, E35. And then that just kind of gives me a base of where her face is around the little circle there. And when I'm done this, I will add in some of the color for her hair, which will be E79 and E74. And that'll give her a little bit of shadow. And then I will take my fine point Sharpie pen and I will go around the edge of the coloring to kind of create a little shadow like she's got a hoodie. Like she's wearing a onesie. You know, Halloween, right? And then I'm just going in with my E53 to give them a face. And I will do the same with the Yeti. I will create like a little circle around the head of the child and just kind of create little dark spots. And then with my mid-tone, I will kind of blend that out. Careful not to go into the hair or the face. And then I'll blend all that in with my lettuce color here. And I thought I'd bring in a fourth one, which you don't have to, but I wasn't quite digging the blend of it. So, And then I'll add in some more because I wasn't happy with it. And I'll just keep adding until I am, which is fine. So this is going to be like the child's wearing like a fun fur costume. And uh, actually, one year for Halloween, uh, me and some of my friends made costumes out of fun fur, and the living room was absolutely destroyed. <laughs> there was shards of fun fur everywhere. It looked like somebody's animal had exploded in the living room, and we were sweeping it up for weeks. It was awesome. <laughs> anyway, there was my ghost. And here we are getting into the actual scene that we will be setting. And I've got this grassy border dye from Lawn Fawn that I am going to cut this Echo Park dotted paper with. And I had already splattered it. And I cut it down to see what side I wanted to use. And we'll add a little bit of rustic wilderness here just to kind of darken it up because I didn't like how bright it was. It looked too much for a daytime scene, and I kind of wanted it to be not quite a nighttime scene, but, you know, it was getting dark, and I wanted it dark. So I'll just take my tape runner, add it to the back, throw down some glue, make sure everything can be nice and stuck. Now, I wish I probably could have left that tape off and figured it out. Maybe I wanted something in behind, but it is what it is. So I used my Misty to kind of corner that up the best that I could, and then I will take a pair of scissors and trim that off. So here I kind of struggled with what to do. These are the speech bubbles, and I have the sentiment from the Love You S'more set. Now, I wanted to have a specific saying, so I'm doing a little stamp masking here. I just wanted the is, and then I'm going to use the every day. So the front of the card will say every day is and then once I'm happy with that I will set that off to the side and I will work on the inside so this will say every day is and then when you open it up it'll say Halloween now there's an old song that I used to listen to as a teenager by a band called Ministry that was called every day is Halloween I think it was and I really liked the song and I actually had to turn the song on while I was doing it 
just so I could get into the vibe. So here I'm just taking some neon green. This is a Jelly Roll pen. I don't know which one it is because they don't have names on them really. But this is some neon pen that I had in my collection. And I'm just going inside the lines here. And I left the stamp on and the card in there so I can go over it. That way it looks nice and crisp. So I'm taking the Everyday Is Speech Bubble here. And I am going around the outside edges with my black Copic marker. That way it'll stand out a little bit better on the background. Kind of, I don't know how to explain it. it. Giving it a little bit of a black border around it. Just a hint of it looks really cool, I think. So I'll mess around with my placement here. And then I will adhere everybody on with some foam tape. Now here's where I become a bit of a garbage picker. I have some scrap pieces of backing to my big double-sided tape that I have. And I found that if I use the backing, the leftover backing, the throwaway piece, and put it on the other side of my double-sided foam tape, it's a lot easier and less gunky on my scissors to cut it. So I kind of like this little hack. Um, you know, I've tried powdering my scissors, and I try to clean them off with rubbing alcohol after each session, but sometimes I forget. So cutting them with the backing of another piece of double-sided tape that you throw away really works. So you'll have to let me know if you've tried it or if you haven't tried it. That's another good little hack anyway. So here I am just kind of lining everybody up with their own little foam tape. Only two of the critters, I shouldn't say they're critters, but two of the kids on my card are only going to get foam tape because I kind of want them to be a little dimensional and stand in the foreground. Is it the foreground? Or the background? Foreground? Yeah, I think that's it. It's late. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm just adding some double-sided tape to this guy and some glue. And I will mash him down in the middle. And then I'll take the bear. And then, again, the yutty. And I'll do the same for those two as well. It's just to kind of tie in my scene. I don't know. I thought this was a lot of fun to make. It's, it's kind of a simple card. It's not... Too exciting. I mean, I probably could have did a little bit more with the, the the background, but I don't know. I was in a mood. I wanted to create um, little Halloween trick or treaters, and sometimes I kind of fall short with the backgrounds. <laughs> but you know what? It is what it is. You know, maybe maybe I could have added something a little more to the background, but I ended up going with some rhinestones that I had. I had some flat back rhinestones from recollections. You'll see at the end what ones that I used. I kind of kept it same to the, the background, but here I'm just going around with my gel pen and giving some dots and dashes to the little children who are going out trick-or-treating. Um, ironically, they don't have any bags. That actually would have been a good idea to do is to give them some bags or a little pumpkin, but I don't have the little pumpkin with the little handle on it. Unless... Unless Fantastic Friends has it. I don't know if Fantastic Friends has it or not. I suppose I could have looked. But I didn't. But oh well. Maybe I can add them on later. I don't know. So anyway, after I'm done throwing around more foam tape, I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of my little speech bubble. And I'll add some glue. And then I'll set it off to the side. I could have put it in the middle, but I didn't. So we'll leave it like that. And here you have my finished card. Every day is bu -bu -bu Halloween. So if you like today's card, how about you give it a thumbs up? Maybe even subscribe. I don't know. And as always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Take care.